How you doing? Welcome along to uh, the second part of this um, viewers take or viewers tips on how to deal with some of the cravings. This is um, one of the vi videos we put out a video a couple of weeks ago and uh, we've already done one of these uh, where we're talking about. I just put out a video asking people for asking our viewers for their tips on, um, on what they did when they stopped drinking alcohol. So we've already done 20 of these there are thereabouts um and now we're going to do the 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 second 20 we've got about 40 comments on the on the website in uh, on youtube in total so uh stick around to the end and i'll give you what i think are, are a couple of my best tips in order to uh to help you through the first few the first few um days and weeks of this journey okay so let's uh share the screen here right so we ended up this one with, uh, I think Paul Meehan was the last one we talked about. Uh, he said, walking, reading, meditation, gratitude, uh, talking about how you feel and realizing that the, the cravings do pass. Uh, one of the most important things that you can uh, understand about this is that this too shall pass, right? Breathing exercises, we had that as well earlier on. Um, next one is from uh, Dolores, uh, Dolores Collins, and she says, uh, I go over all the reasons I don't want to drink instead of focusing on the reasons I do. Uh, that's a great tip. Uh, I also bring to mind all the people I know of or uh, know in my personal life who I don't who don't drink and whom I love, admire, and look up to. Right. So that's a it's a good way of looking at things. That it's um, there's we we often get stuck in the idea that everybody drinks and that we're missing out on something. But some of the most successful people in the world, some of the most successful people that I personally know um, are non-drinkers or who drink very, very little. Um, and they live their life as if they're non-drinkers. You know, it's not a big thing. Um, when I was drinking, it was it, it started to become involved in everything that I was doing. Um, so she goes on to say eventually all of the all of these things win me over and the cravings subside eating an apple while i'm thinking helps me too yeah so you're you're focusing on something i mean it's it's one of those things in meditation that people um uh i've said before quite a few occasions that i don't really um i don't really sit down with my knees crossed and doing the whatever that's called uh, because i can't sit down still for um for that length of time but it's the focus it's the um i was able to do it with uh, i bought a set of beads similar to the irish catholic rosary beads but they were um just a circular bead and you could flick through these things i can't remember how many was on it and you as you're flicking through it you're saying a um a chant i can't remember the chant that i was using but it was something solid it was something in english uh, you know, it wasn't arm or anything like that. It was something that I used. Um, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, it was a sentence, but it was a, more of a thing where I was trying to program myself into into a certain way of thinking, and, and that really helped me because it was I was focusing on my breathing. I was focusing on a a sentence that was over and over and over again, and I was focusing on this flicking these beats between my fingers, um, and I, I get the sense that it's the same thing when people use the um the rosary beads you know there's often a thing where people are saying the rosary so in in the rosary if you don't know it you say um there's a, a big bead and there's 10 little beads smaller beads between the big bead and then another 10 i can't remember how many there are going around in circle but the big bead represents an our 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 father our father full of, who, who art in heaven that kind of thing and then each of the smaller beads is a hail mary so you're supposed to say Hail Mary for the grace. Uh, you know, I haven't done this in years, but it shows you the programming. That these things are still stuck in there. But it's you hear when you watch people doing it, it's Hail Mary for the grace of God. And it's they're not really listening to the words that they're saying, but it's more that they're using it in order to focus on a meditation. And I think that's a lot of what prayer is. Right. And I'm not religious, so let's not go down that road. But it's the same. It's a similar thing. I find that when I'm walking, sometimes I just want to get out there with nothing, just my rucksack on my back, some water in it, maybe an apple. And I just want to be left alone with my thoughts, concentrating on the steps that I'm taking, 
um, the breaths that I'm taking going up a hill, you know, and you're every so often I have to stop and, you know, but in general, you're just walking, you're taking the steps and you're breathing and, and you're allowing the journey to take itself. So that's a good meditation. I did that at the beginning uh, a lot. Um, I did it to distract my mind, to get myself out of the house and really to, um, to just be doing something. All right. So thanks, Doris. Thank you to everyone uh, who's left these comments, by the way. Uh, I really appreciate the effort that um, people have taken. Like I said, I'm not going to open up um, the ones that are longer than, you know, there's only a couple that I've done. I, I opened one up for Cam before, who happens to be somebody, a member of our program. So um, I, I do him the because of that, I, I thought I'd open that he left a long comment, but otherwise it's going to get too long. And I'm talking away now, so it's going to get too long. So Jackie, Jackie Bragoli, I suppose. Um, hopefully I've pronounced that right. I only ever get cravings when I want to get away from severe stress. My mom of 87 is schizophrenic. and My dad always struggled with alcohol. We lived in pubs uh, when I was growing up. And mom learned that if she drank, the voices she heard were dumbed down. Um, her illness is the source of my stress now at 63, divorced and quite lonely in a funny kind of way. Um, if I don't want to drink to numb down, I make sure I eat plenty of good healthy food with vegetables and also plenty of water. Uh, then the cravings go. I will sleep early too. I'm always happy and proud of myself when I haven't caved into that destructive pattern. Um, yeah, I'm going to open this one because uh, I feel that's she's got something more to say. Uh, I'm not totally teetotal yet uh, but i would like to be this is the reason i've been following kevin for about three years uh love the down-to-earth approach in the easy manner okay uh, i really hope that um i can understand it i mean it's it's very easy for me look i i, I stopped this because of my son uh because i felt like uh, my son was starting to model my behavior instead of uh modeling the wrong type of behavior you know you're supposed to be a role model in the in the the wise sense in the sense of you are leading your children into actions and behaviors and ways of thinking um that is going to make them productive that is going to protect them um from themselves more than anything else but also protect them uh, outside in, in the environment um and is going to give them uh, an inheritance which is far greater than any of the money that you can ever give them. You know, you, you he often hear about people who, who give the children um, monetary in inheritance and it, it spoils them. You know, if you've, got a, uh, if you've got multiple members of your family, it can cause conflicts that are so great that it breaks up the family. Um, and I think any any time we get money in our lives that is not earned, it's treated in a completely different way, uh, or it has that capacity uh, to be to be viewed in that way and to be spent in that way. Um, you know, they they always there's a thing which says that the the, the richest people uh, the people who make the most money in their lives off their own back and come from nothing will um if they've had to make it over and over and over again i mean over and over i mean if they have if, if they've had to make it from the bottom up they're not the people who buy the ferraris and the rich cars and the massive houses that they don't need or any of that stuff the yachts it's the next generation i mean unless you've got fuck you money you know um uh it's, i was reading something about Elon Musk recently who uh, they said that he'd bought that they've got a line of um are they Tesla houses something to, to to do with one of his businesses anyway and they're small compact houses that are made from um the basic stuff to give you the basic living space and as cheap as possible and I think these things are going to be dirt cheap you know 30,000 or something like that and apparently he lives in one of those things um I always remember listening to who is the boxer now the gypsy king um tyson fury and he's had multi-million dollar fights um and he's you know i don't know how much he's worth 50 million maybe 100 million and he drives a 2006 
Volkswagen Passat, I think he drives, an old beat-up car anyway. Uh, and he said that he stopped fighting because the most important things in his life now are his wife and his children. And I always thought that was a great, you know, just love that that aspect of things. So my point here is um, for Jackie that um, there are certain things in life that that everything, all of this is an individual choice. Uh, all of us are dealing with individual problems in our lives and some people have got mm, many more problems than other people when you're living with um a parent who is who is who has something uh, something wrong with them in this sense uh, who is suffering from a disease and not only do you have that as as a backdrop for uh, your own life but you've also got it as a worry from your own personal perspective as well you know genetics whether you're going, to, you're going to see this down the road in your own self. So um, this is the journey, Jackie. Uh, it's it's a journey that sometimes takes a long time to go there. Uh, it took me a long time to realize and to understand what I was doing with myself. Uh, it took me a lot of different attempts to stop drinking alcohol, although I didn't know that uh, they were attempts at the time. They were um, what I called moderation trying to find a different way of still um, being able to have my medication, my crutch, whatever you want to call it, to take in my poison, um, but not to have the consequences. And those are two things which are just seriously not compatible with each other. So um, however long it takes you on this journey, you should be happy that you're on it, you know? Uh, regardless of, of whether or not you have a slip up, it, it's the days that you don't drink that are um, that are the ones that you you uh, that you are grateful for, and it's that knowledge that you want to do this. You know, that's the the biggest thing for me. You know, I say on this channel a lot: you you will never regret the drink that you didn't take the night before, ever. So, you know, oftentimes it's just about getting to that stage where. Um, you're stringing those days together and you string enough of those days together and you've stopped uh, and then changing your whole outset, your, your mindset uh, about the whole thing, you know. So anyway, I uh, wish you the best of luck, Jackie. Marathon man. Um, uh, think very carefully about the consequences of drinking before drinking. If you still want to drink, go for a long walk, spend 30 minutes reading a book to calm down. Good luck. Yeah, good, good, uh, good advice there. Uh, KC, I watched a video on Kate B's channel, and she quotes, uh, Bre is it Brené Brown? Anyway, uh, every time we say yes because we're afraid of missing out, we say no to something else. That really struck me with, uh, that really struck me. I flip it and ask myself the opposite. If I say no to alcohol at this moment, what am I saying yes to? Uh, which is a wonderful list I'm saying yes to my sobriety, my health, a good night's sleep, no regrets, being productive, being present for my kids, my friends, my family, and the list goes on. I find answering that little question to be so incredibly powerful to stay in the course when I feel a little shaky with cravings. It's a nice one. I think this is one that's got the most uh, thumbs up. So well done for that. Um, Casey, this is something I talk about on the channel a lot, and it's um, you know, I, I see it as uh, from an economics point of view, and it's from an, an economic term. It's called the opportunity cost, uh, and the two things for me that that are the most valuable in my life are time. Time is running out for all of us very quickly, and energy. Uh, and energy. The older you get, the less the less energy you have, and the less capable you are of. Uh, using that energy, particularly uh, physically, I think mentally, you, you know, if, if you can stay the course um, and you can avoid things, um, mental breakdown, um, you can use your energy levels more productively. The more uh, the more knowledge and understanding you have about yourself and life, you can use those energy levels more for that. Um, so every time you drink, there is not only an opportunity cost for the time that you're drinking, but for that, however long it takes you to recover. So to recover physically 
And there is a certain space of time, there is a certain amount of time that you go through um, as you're recovering when you're not up to the 100%. Now, some people never hit that because they keep the cycle of drinking uh, going on. We show, showed you uh, the other day. I did, no, I didn't. I haven't shown you that one yet. Um, but I will. I'll show you. This is um, sort of uh, the drinking timeline. So there's the timeline before you drink. There's the time timeline. The, there's a second timeline. It's when you the the alcohol is going into your body. So you're tasting it. It's going into your system, and you're getting drunk. Right. That's the second timeline. The third timeline is when you've stopped drinking and the alcohol is still in your system, and it's your your body is working through that. The fourth timeline is um, the alcohol itself has gone from your system but you're still uh you're still suffering from the acute effects of the alcohol on your brain and on your body and your life and the fifth timeline is just that long-term process of the damage that you've created for yourself because of the alcohol that you've consumed and that's sort of an accumulative thing and it keeps going on and on um so think about those just those first three timelines the the time that you're thinking about drinking the, the time that you're drinking and the time that you're um you're recovering from the alcohol the physical recovery and the mental recovery and then the, the it's gone i suppose a little bit of the fourth timeline as well what you could be doing with that time um and as we said in a um the, the more you drink the more your life gets sucked into a, a black hole the alcohol becomes a black hole the alcohol becomes the focus and the more you drink the more you are dragged into that one focus and everything else becomes revolving around that um you know i, I can see in my own life i wasn't at that top end of things uh use the ben anderson one again of um from leaving las vegas where he was just drinking himself to death you know uh, I wasn't at that end, but I, I could see in myself that I was heading down that way. And that was an important turning point for me. So that's a good one. Opportunity cost. Just think about all the, the time and energy that you're putting into these things. Your time and energy means much more than money, right? You can always earn money again. Um, but the time is gone and the energy is gone. And those two things work together. You know, um, those two things work together. Think of the amount of time that is that just disappears from your life because of alcohol. You know, we're talking about uh, blank spots that you just will never get back. When you're not drinking, I remember things that happened. The the That full year that I stopped drinking alcohol, I can still remember things that happened. That, and that's nearly 10 years ago. Clear as day. I can't say that for a lot of the... The, the most important times in your life, think about this. When you're drinking, the times that you drink are when you're with people, uh, you're, you're, you're relaxing, you're socializing, um, when you're celebrating, right? All of these times are the times that you want to remember. When you get older um, and you're thinking back to these things when you were young, all of those things are gone literally gone you've gone through them but you can't remember them and even if you can remember them the next day how long does the, the do those memories stay with you because of the alcohol so that's a whammy that you're getting from the time aspect and the energy aspect is just you know um you burn in so much energy i mean when you're putting this toxin inside your body your body is having to burn through energy where it cannot use that same energy all those same resources you know, all the, the different um, hormones and all the different chemicals that are going on, the different chemical processes that are happening inside your body, it cannot use those for anything else. It has to focus everything on to get rid of this shit that you put inside your body. That's energy that you can't use for other things in your life to progress yourself, right? So anyway, um, I'm going to get myself some tea. I've got myself some nice chamomile tea here this is a it's a, one of these things that we bought from amazon very nice uh if you want to relax it's one of the best things that you can have a very natural plant and um, drink it in tea uh, valerian as well is another one that i use okay uh ria branks uh thanks today like every day i say never again but then i do it all over again this popped up today and it's the day to keep the suggestions coming and wish me luck best of luck ria 
uh, hopefully you get some things that can help you. Um, all good. Thank you very much for the um, the super chat. Um, if you want to, um, if you want to contribute to towards what we're doing here, uh, towards the 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 group of people that we have behind us uh, that are helping us to get these videos out every day, then uh, you can do it down below with the thanks button. Or um, we've also got um, what sort of thing now with the Patreon, Patreon.com. I think that the link is in the description there. So if you feel like you want to do something like that, it's very much appreciated. Uh, ben Morby. Um, hold on. I'd have to say that although it may be near impossible for some, a total change of environment for me has drastically reduced my cravings. I had to leave my home where I lived with my mother and father and move in with a friend and put up boundaries with my parents to avoid triggers that ultimately led to cravings. Although these boundaries are in place, I still say yes to going to the bottle shop for mom and dad occasionally when I visit if they are out of drink. That's sad. Um, I, I immediately think upon waking, uh, upon walking to the bottle shop, maybe just one bottle of wine uh, that I could sneak back into my new place and hide later on. Um, it would not stop me at, at one, and I know this. Um bit long-winded but a roundabout way I hope I've given an answer to your question so yeah mindset is easily flawed no matter how strong um, if not then hang up new posters are out on the wall play new music get outside sit in a different chair etc I think that's a good one uh, no never sit in the place that you that you drink you know you can go back to this later on uh, you know I, I even find if you if you turn <laughs> turn your chair around and move your TV to another wall or something like that you know, if that's the least you can do, um, you're, you're sitting down and it's it's sort of, it's changed enough in order for you to reduce the trigger at least. Um, so seven weeks sober, well done. Um, okay, all good. Have a variety of juice and teas and seltzers that you like. Your body will crave sugar for a few weeks uh, or more after quitting the poison. Um when bored and craving think of how shitty you feel the next day and how bad you'll sleep if you uh, cave into the crave yeah try distraction with a game on your phone or a movie or a book or write so distractions and yeah it's it, it is that it, the more you can distract yourself the better it is for yourself um all right n2 cable my advice is keep your promise that you made to yourself the last person on earth you want to lie to or break that promise is you. If you say you're not going to drink, don't drink. And Jason says, so right, it's all about you, absolutely. No one else can do it, no one. I'll say, I mean, we talk about this a lot, that no matter where you go, and you can pay 30 or 40 grand per month for treatment in some rehabilitation um, establishments, but it's you that has to not put the alcohol into your body and you have to care about your, yourself enough. And sometimes it's difficult in the beginning to do that. You know, it's something that you have to build up over time. Um, and that can be difficult. You know, there's the, the alcohol can put you into a spiral of uh, self-hatred um, of, you know, at least you, you don't like yourself, you know, and how can it not? You've got this conflict going on inside yourself all the time. Um your body knows that it's bad for you, uh, and you know it's bad for you on a conscious level. You just um, you want to push that down, push it out of the way. So it's very, it's one of the reasons why we drink, is so we don't have to think about those things, and we convince ourselves that we're doing this for all these other reasons, all these other benefits. Um, but they're a, a poor excuse for the reality of these things. Alcohol never helps you to relax. Not really. Um, it doesn't help you to socialize, not really. Um, we convince ourselves of that. Um, and because we've got that conflict, we can get this idea of despising ourselves, um, of not liking who we are, of not liking what we've done. You know, you, you can only get up so many times in the morning and think to yourself, why did I say that last night? Why have I got to apologize for that again? You know, why did I do that last night? I don't want to do this anymore. And we've all been there of getting up 
And um, I remember towards the end, and I, I would be that sick with the hangover. Honestly, it felt like I was dying. Um, and all I could do all day long, all I wanted to do all day long was crawl up in a ball and go to sleep and not think about it until the next day. And I can understand how um, it's easy to to spill over and to start drinking again. And, to, and I've done it a few times, not in the morning, but towards the end of the day, maybe a couple of times in the morning. Um, but I can, I can understand how it's, uh, it's easy to do that. I, the only thing that one of the things that stopped me from doing it was I felt so sick and I, I couldn't really stomach that first, that first alcohol sip. So I never went that way, but I could easily have, have disappeared from that day and just got rid of that day. You know, uh, considering the that you've only got the average life is twenty seven and a half thousand days. By the time you get to my age, I, I saw there recently that I'd already passed the twenty one thousand mark. That's a fucking scary thought. But it would have been so much more scary if I had continued drinking. Um, so, as I said, this is. Sometimes it takes a long time. It takes the, the for you to to change a lot of the mindsets to push push yourself in a in a different direction, um, push yourself towards that best possible version of yourself. You know that that's it's one of the things that I have discovered about my own self and my own uh, my own job as a teacher is to focus on that more than anything else. You know, dealing with the with the alcohol is one thing getting people away from the alcohol is one thing but then once you get away from that it's you have to focus your mind on a completely different um a completely different aspect of yourself or many different aspects of yourself to get away from this um in order for you to get to the stage where you you would rather there there, there were so many things that you would rather do you know and uh, there was a, another list earlier on i don't know if we're going to come up against it now um the guy said on his list of things, it was the last thing that he would like to do. But yeah, I mean, I've I've gone through that. Uh, you, you know, you understand that alcohol that there was there is no way that you will ever put alcohol inside your body again. Just because, why would you? You know, what what the fuck would you do this for again? You know, and I'm not talking about it from the perspective of looking back in your life and and say, you know, well, look at all the damage that's done. Fuck that. I'm talking about from where you are now. Now means everything. This moment that you're in means everything. So being in this moment and saying to yourself, what the hell would I want to do that for, you know? And the only way you can get there is when you've put enough days behind you alcohol-free without any of this shit, right? And you're building something that is heading forwards. You're focusing forwards and you're moving towards a goal in the future that is... Um, that is giving you more motivation than you've had before in your life. That is really pulling you forward. That's the type of goal that you need. Um, and it's not a goal. It's probably the wrong way of saying things. It's it's you're you've created and you're established in a life that you've you're building and that you're on that road where you're feeling happy. You're feeling that contentment, that um, straight line contentment where you have a little dip up and a dip down, but it's not far from that. That's where you want to get. All right, Frank Cardano says, uh, exercise, sleep, reading a good book with a mug of tea. Hopefully it's uh, chamomile tea or valerian. Uh, although I haven't stopped entirely, but tie in with it. Well, good for you, Frank. Hopefully you'll get there. And do enough tie in with the idea and you'll eventually stop. Junkyard, junkyard hero. When I get triggered to drink, the best thing I've found is getting up and outside, uh, do something, doesn't matter what, just to get up and move 30 minutes or so. It passes and seems silly that I was triggered. Also, be proactive. Do not do the things that trigger your uh, music was one big one for me, and I don't listen to the same music. as a, It's a trade-off, uh, always a trade-off. Uh, anybody who has a drinking problem will get hit by a craving from time to time, and it's okay. It's part of the process. Um, this is one of the things I'll, I'll actually, I'll speak about this now. I was going to speak about this towards the end, but it, it's your definition of a, tr of a craving as well. Um, you know, we've got 
a certain idea of what a craving is. Um, you know, when we hear about cravings, they're always associated with something medical or something psychological or something psy uh, psychiatric. But it's not a good thing, you know, it's something bad that we have. Now, cravings are a, when you change your view about them, they're a normal part of a process. They're a normal part of the habit trying to reestablish itself. Um, they're a normal part of of just life in general, of, of um, your body trying to get you. I mean, hunger is a certain craving. Thirst is a certain type of craving. Um, and they're built in urges that you have which are leading you down a good path, you know. Um, but there are also cravings. I mean, we, we don't live in a world where you can go up to a fucking alcohol tap in a tree and turn it on you know and go oh jesus this is out i'm glad i found this tap now you know alcohol whiskey tap that i can just go over to any time i want and you know that this is a man-made thing that you look at it from that perspective we're not wired for, for all that kind of stuff so alcohol and all these drugs and sugars uh, and all these kind of things except the, the ones that you find the, the unnatural um industrial manufactured kind of things they hijacked these natural processes that we have and because they are um, a lot stronger you know um we've got opioid receptors in our brain uh, we've got different receptors for different things that we we have that make us feel good naturally getting out and having a walk having sex um eating good food you know all those things trigger off these um pleasure sensations in your brain it doesn't fucking matter which ones are you know it, it makes no difference whether it's a dopamine or a serotonin or whatever you know which part of your brain because it's all working in there um all you need to know is that these are natural natural processes that are happening and when you take something that is like alcohol or you take any, any of the drugs like cocaine or heroin or sugar is a big one it hijacks these uh, and gives them a big shot of this natural so it mimics the natural process but in a bigger way and then because it's a bigger way the response is bigger and then you get this big seesaw uh, event that's happening in your brain that just fucks you up big time uh, in the long run because you no longer then um the natural processes no longer give you that hit that they're supposed to give you um but the opposite side of that is that you're getting a bigger down so when you don't take this drug anymore, um, you're just fucked up, basically. So I forgot what my point was on that one, but it's um, you've got to be, as, as a junkyard hero says, proactive in what you do. Um, all right, Liz McSorley. Uh, for a long time, I felt like I was done with alcohol, and that turned into not drinking for a day, a week, a month, and that mindset has now become not wanting to ever drink again i can't explain what or how that switch in my head flipped but it has and every day that passes i feel stronger awake and energized there is so much more in life and i want that not feeling hungover not forgetting alcohol fuel behavior uh not being able to get up in the morning and to actually see seize the day good points uh thanks liz hey bobby Good question going on two years sober. For me, there was times when I went to bed early to avoid the crazy hours of just not thinking about it. That's a, a good one, you know. It's um, get out of it. We're nearly finished with these now. I think we've got two more. Um, I found that mixing up the routine definitely helps. You just can't get through the, the motions of your day with no alcohol. It has to be uh, an everything changer. You're going to make life harder on yourself. It's hard enough as it is. Final thought, I'd rather stay sober. Uh, then get sober all over again. Yeah, that's a good one to finish off with. I think you know, think about this this moderation thing as going through that. Uh, we talk about this in the program a lot, the moderation loop, where you are you moderate and people moderate for the pain. They don't moderate the alcohol. They moderate because they're in pain. They're in trouble. They're in. It's the emotional downer that they don't like. So they moderate in that, and then they moderate for a while, and the pain diminishes and then they think ah i'm grand now you know i feel grand about this sure i can uh 
and go back to where it was. But you not only go back to where you were, you go a bit further. And then you need to moderate again because you're back into the same shit again, you know. And then you moderate again to moderate the pain and you go in this spiral and it's over and over and over again. And the more you do this, the more um, the, the, the harder it is the next time because every time you moderate and you fail, it's a failure and you know it's a failure. And it it hurts you inside. It hurts you psychologically. You know, it, it. I'm not talking about it physically hurts you like somebody punches you in the face. It hurts you in your sense of your own capabilities, your own ability to do this. You know, you start to see yourself in a smaller way, in a weaker, more fragile way. And that is much more damaging in the long run. And, you know, it's people wonder why um, the, people put off this and they say, I'm not going to do this until next time. I'll talk about this in a minute, actually. Um, going to the last one. It's from Midas. And he says, I get cravings. I feel bored. And if I have emotions like loneliness, emptiness, um, having no purpose in life. Okay, that wasn't really a comment. But, yeah, I mean, it's this is what I'm talking about with alcohol. It, it gradually sucks out, um, sucks out everything that is good about life you know it gives you boredom because you become a boring person you know the more that you dumb down your mind the more dumb you become you know it makes sense you know how can you be an intelligent person and be pouring this poison into your mind all the time that is continuously like a hammer hammer blow on the head and then that of course, is going to lead on to emotions like loneliness, emptiness, having no purpose in life. I mean, it's the thing that I think everybody, this is the one thing that we have in life is is, is purpose. As living beings, uh, the one thing that we have over inanimate beings is that we have a purpose, regardless of what that purpose is. Now, some people's purpose in life is just to experiment with as many drugs and to experience as many feelings as they can or just to... Uh, do whatever they can with the with the drug that they're doing, right? So <laughs> all good says you can volunteer or mentor or get a dog. Remember that dogs are are for um, sobriety. <laughs> uh, dogs are for when you've stopped quitting drinking alcohol as well, you know. So don't get a dog if you're just going to use it for the time. Take somebody else's dog out for a walk is the best the best thing to do there. All right, I'm going to finish it up today with uh, just a couple of. Um, things myself right this is i think when somebody says how think about the the we've already covered a little bit in um that the cravings are going to pass and if you want to know how long the cravings last for they're going to last as long as they last right there's no getting through that and how long that is depends on you it depends on your personality it depends on your uh, your physical state your mental state it depends on so many different things but like I said, you can turn the dial up and you can turn the dial down by the stories that you tell yourself. And um, I was talking just a little bit earlier about this idea that the alcohol takes away from you and continues to take away from you. The moderation takes away from you. That you know everything is about um, you, you're gradually lowering and lowering and lowering and lowering and lowering yourself. Um, and a lot of people, what they do is they put off the time that they're going to, you know, they use procrastination as a tool to say, uh, I'll wait until next week because I'll be in a better position then. The problem is that you won't be in a better position then. The only way that you're going to be in a better position is to build yourself into that better position. You know, the Einstein, famous quote from Einstein said that the uh, definition of insanity was, um, to do the same things over and over again and expect a different result. So when you're doing this same thing happens to be something that is destructive, that's basically what it's doing to you. It's destroying you. It's destroying not only physically you, but the thing that makes you, which is your mind, right? So the only way to get out of that is to stop drinking, and then you start to build up. You build mental strength, right? And that's a gradual, gradual process. We talk about most of our program on Habits V2 is about 
building that best possible version of yourself. So you get to the best possible version of yourself after a month. You get to the best possible version of yourself after two months, after three months, six months, one year. Get into that best possible version of yourself that you can possibly get to at that first year. And it's about building a life that is not just about the quantity of the time that you've got left. So you're trying to increase the quantity of life. And I guarantee you that stop drinking alcohol and you will do this. I mean, I can't guarantee you that, but, you know, it's uh, all of the things being equal. And if nothing happens to you, uh, then you're going to increase the quantity of the life. But it's about increasing the quality of, of life. That's the most important part, because even if you have shorter years, but your quality of years is better. That's a much better life. What's the point in living a long life if it's a shit life? You don't want to do that. So that's my 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 tip for you is is think about this in the in the in the long perspective. It's easy to get stuck in the mindset of um, instant gratification. Uh, if I if I drink now, I can I can relieve that bit of bad feeling that I'm feeling, or I can relieve that thought process and I can um, I can put it off until tomorrow. But then you put it off tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. As long as you're stuck in that instant gratification mindset, you will never get out of it because that's what we're really battling here. It's not the alcohol. It's the mindsets. It's that short-term thinking. You have to broaden your horizons and broaden your thinking out to the long term. Um, you know, I, I have to... Say Habits V2 if you want to uh, if you want to get some help with this. It's a good investment, right? Um, we do charge money for it, you know, because we, you know, it costs us money to run the thing, you know. We've got a group of people we have to pay to pay the, the rent and pay the wages and stuff. So it has to happen. But it's a good investment. Uh, like I said, we focus not just on stopping drinking alcohol, but on what happens afterwards. And that's the most important part for me. Because uh, otherwise you're going to get stuck in this spiral of either thinking that you're a fucking alcoholic for the rest of your life. And who wants that, you know, and everything that that means. Um, or, you know, you're going to keep going around the spiral of stopping drinking, going back to drinking, stopping drinking, going back to drinking. And who wants that? But anyway, there's a link down below for Habits V2. Or you can just go to www.habitsv2.com. It's up there. And... Um, if you want a preparation course for free, that's down below as well. Less than an hour to do. And uh, yeah, it should give you a good idea of what we do as well. Um, but also, uh, most importantly, is to get you in, into a better mindset to stop drinking. So hopefully it gives you that. Right, so I'm going to stop it here for today. I uh, really enjoyed doing these ones. I think um, this is like, uh, I get the same feeling with this when I'm out walking. Uh, that kind of uh, flow of ideas and stuff. So it, it, it suits me to do these videos. So I, I'd love to hear what you think of it. Um, and other topics as well that you that you come up with that you'd like to see these videos on. Uh, maybe we can I can get one of the girls to do a, um, a poll on this. Uh, or if you can give, give us your suggestions in the comments below. Um, and we'll do a poll on whatever we come up with, try and aggregate something up uh, and then do more of these videos because I think, yeah. All right, take care of yourself and um, I'll speak to you again soon. Onwards and upwards. Bye now.